All right, two days straight of going over Harmondale articles on The Athletic. I know it might be seen as just kind of copying and pasting and doing the thing, but Harmon does some really good work, and he brings up some really good discussion points on each of the articles that he produces. So, as with yesterday's video, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the most recent piece published on The Athletic, NHL Agent Poll. Could Elias Pettersson consider a short-term contract with the Vancouver Canucks? This was published, as we had said yesterday, and a link is going to be in the description, but we're also going to leave a link in the description to this article on ProHockeyRumors.com. And the reason for this is because the Pro Hockey Rumors piece is not behind a paywall, and it summarizes what it is that Harmondale goes out there and writes. But essentially, we are talking today about Elias Pettersson, the best player on the Vancouver Canucks, the franchise center on the Vancouver Canucks, the most important player this team has, and a guy who does need a contract extension past 23-24. He's 24 years old, 6'2", 185, left-handed center, and he is signed till the end of this upcoming season, making $7.35 million a year. It's honestly kind of nuts thinking that Elias Pettersson needs an extension because it just feels like yesterday that Jim Benning signed him to this three-year $7.35 million AAV deal in the first place. But, nevertheless, Elias Pettersson is coming off a campaign where he had 102 points in 80 games played, 39 goals, 63 assists. He almost had as many assists in this prior year as he has had points in all the other seasons he has had. Pettersson has just been an absolute beast, and when it comes to who is going to be taking over the Canucks' representation and all the awards these next few years, you're going to get some heart votes, you're going to get some selkie votes. Pedersen realistically has it in him to win at least one of these awards at some point in his career. It's just a matter of when, not necessarily if. Especially with that selkie, too. The guy is a defensive beast. He's always back-checking, he's always stick-lifting, his dangles are so good. He plays a really Pavel Datsuk-esque type of game, and Vancouver Canucks fans have been so blessed to see PD work out in the way that he has at the NHL level. I still remember back in 2017 when Canucks fans were pissed off that they didn't take Cody Glass and they drafted Pedersen instead, but either way, PD is in the realm of contract extension territory. He does need a contract after 23-24, and the article on The Athletic goes over what NHL agents are saying. Of course, though, no screenshots here. We're going over onto the Pro Hockey Rumors article. While the Canucks will still retain his rights next summer as an RFA if an extension isn't reached soon, Pedersen's potential eligibility for UFA status in 2025, if only he signs a one-year extension, has given him tremendous leverage in upcoming negotiations. His agent, J.P. Barry, said early last month he doesn't anticipate beginning those extension talks with Vancouver until the end of the summer. Now pause before we continue further, that makes a lot of sense. For Elias Pettersson, having this idea of signing an extension right away, let's say tomorrow he signs an eight-year, let's say nine and a half million dollar deal, and then Pettersson goes out there and produces a 115-point season. Not to say that that's unrealistic, but just throwing an example out there. If Pettersson gets the bag right now and then he produces a lot better in next season, then all of a sudden, his contract is a steal, and Pedersen is left feeling that, hey, I could have gotten a bit more money if I just waited. Also, you have the one-year thing where he signs an extension for just one season, which you're probably not going to see because Patrick Alvin and co. definitely understand what the contract situation is going to look like if that's the case, and they're going to want to limit the potential of him going to UFA status anyway, and Pedersen does really well, then all of a sudden, he has all the leverage to get even more money next season. However, with the Vancouver Canucks having Emily Castonge as their primary money person, she's phenomenal with the cap, and she's been doing a lot of work in the financial NHL world for the past few years, so she definitely knows what she's doing. She's not going to be foolish to give him a one-year deal, Today, though, the Athletics' Harmondale polled a number of NHL agents on what potential scenarios could arise in Pedersen extension talks. Obviously, the biggest question facing Pedersen's camp is whether he should sign an extension immediately this summer or take a wait-and-see approach into this season. Waiting would offer him more clarity in the Canucks' future and potentially enhance his earning power if he continues his upward climb. If the team can perform well after a long stretch of mediocrity, Pedersen may feel more comfortable committing long-term. 
And yeah, there's another benefit right there. If the team is able to actually prove their worth and show to Pedersen, hey, we're getting better. We're not going to stick around in the bottom part of the league. We're actually going to contend for a wild card. We're going to maybe make a wild card and actually contend for a top three spot over the next few years in the Pacific. So you got nothing to worry about committing yourself long term because we already remember the comments he made last time that he wants to win. He wants to be a part of a team that is championship caliber and is always competitive, etc., etc. The Canucks and unfortunately, have not been that for the majority of their time that Pedersen has been with them. One anonymous agent suggested to the Harmondale interview here that a wait-and-see approach could be sensible, but they also said not to discount the mental challenges that a contract year can place upon a player and, in turn, affect their performance. If Pedersen and his camp feel the outside noise of extension talks during the season would be too much of a distraction, signing now would almost definitely be a better choice to avoid lowering his value after a 102-point year last season. It's likely something Pedersen will heavily consider after going through the contract-related pressure he faced in the final year of his ELC in 2020-2021, Dale says. There also is another conversation about other extensions around the NHL for top superstars that are young centers like Austin Matthews and Sebastian Ajo. Some of these guys have signed, others have not. So there is a little pool of elite franchise centers that may or may not have a hand in dictating what Pedersen does here. But long story short, if the agent goes out there and says, like he said at the beginning, that they're not going to try to do any negotiating right until the season begins, pretty much, then right now, we just got to wait and see. Like, we cannot really go out there and expect too much, but of course, it's all up to Pedersen and his party to assess the situation, assess how Pedersen feels about heading into the year with a contract that is looming over his head because he hasn't signed it yet, or if he wants more of a secure approach. If he bridges again, and he takes a short-term deal because he wants to see more of what the Vancouver Canucks can build around him, then that would be the best-case scenario for him, for sure. It would allow him to get more money in the few years when he probably improves his performance even more, and it allows him to have that security of saying, all right, well, if the Canucks suck, I could always leave. I always have the option to go to free agency and decommit from this team. But of course, that is a very slimy idea in the minds of Canucks fans because they don't want to see Pedersen leave. They don't want to see this guy even think or fathom the idea that he would not be a Canuck long term because he's just way too gosh darn good for Canucks fans to feel comfortable with him leaving in any capacity. So obviously, from the perspective of Canucks fans, we want this guy signed to an eight-year deal. We want him signed to maybe something in the $9.5 to $10 million range. If he gets more than that, yeah, it's understandable. If he gets less than that, then hey, that's just him taking a discount. But for now, this is the update that we have gotten based off of the Harmondale poll of agents throughout the NHL. It is interesting to note that one of them did say straight up that, yeah, having a contract extension looming over a player's head throughout the entire season is a big deal, and we can't go out there and pretend that it's not, because it is. So I thought it was really intriguing for that point to be brought up, because for a lot of these players, I mean, your financial future is secondary to just being able to play right? And for guys like Patterson, we know that all he cares about is just playing. The money is part of it, yes, but this is a guy who just loves hockey. So if you're going to be there worrying about your financial future, your security long term, eight years, four years, one year, whatever, how many millions of dollars you're going to be making, and there's all the media asking you questions about it over and over again, there's no doubt that's going to get to you if you're in that mental capacity for it to do so. So for Pedersen, who knows if he actually is within that realm? Who knows if he's not? He's stoic enough to proceed throughout the year without a contract and not be bothered by it. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Either way, what are your opinions about the Elias Pedersen contract situation? What are your thoughts on how much he should sign for? How much do you think he is going to sign for? And when do you think this contract extension is going to happen? Because he's going to sign. There's no way he doesn't. He is an RFA if he doesn't. But let me know your thoughts either way in your comments, all your opinions about this Pedersen contract. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.